Welcome, again, back on the stage, producer and head of Sonic Team, Mr. Takashi Izuka. And also, the original programmer and father of Sonic the Hedgehog himself, Mr. Yuji Naka. And also, let me welcome to the stage Bobby Wertheim, who will be translating for us today. Give him a cheer! Because without Bobby, we will never understand. So. Naka-san, Izuka-san, thank you very much yeah, for uh, joining us. Uh, we have a number of questions that were posted via fans, so thank you guys for contributing to this. Uh, some of them are my own as well, I had to throw some of them in there. Uh, so let's get started, shall we? Uh, the first question is for Izuka-san. Uh, you first started working on the Sonic series with Sonic 3. What are your favorite memories of that time? Uh, no,セガに入社して Pull your best smiles, people. <laughs> Smile for the camera. There we go. Well, within uh, a year of joining Sega, I ended up working on Sonic 3. And Sonic 3 was being developed in Sega of America. So pretty much on joining Sega, I was sent to America. And I lived there for one and a half years to work on this and Sonic, Sonic, to work on this Sonic and Knuckles title. So that was my fondest memory of living in the US for a year and a half on working for Sonic 3. Must have been a great experience with all the food that they have there. <laughs> what was your favorite food? Favorite food? <laughs> favorite food? <laughs> Chili dog. Chili dogs, there we go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Azik san. Uh, this question is for Naka san. Um, back in the 1990s, when you were originally trying to create the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, it must have been a challenge to try and think of a unique play style for the main character. Uh, what were the inspirations uh, that led you to introduce a physics-based ball-style system in terms of platforming? ま、あの、駆け抜けれる気持ちよさをまず最初実験のプログラムを作ってるんですが、ま、その実験をしている中で、ま、ゲームがこうノンストップで進めるようなこうキャラクターを作っていってまあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、ま
Sonic to get to the goal faster than Mario. <laughs> and at the time, I was working on a port for Ghouls and Ghosts, which had a really smooth gameplay. But what I wanted to achieve with Sonic was to create that same experience of a smooth gameplay, but with an addition of speed and being really fast. So I started experimenting with that, and it ended up being Sonic the Hedgehog, and you know, being him being able to turn into a ball to smoothly attack enemies, so you can smoothly get to the goal without actually stopping ever. Awesome, awesome. Do you like Sonic, Mister? <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> awesome. That's why we're happy you're here. So a question for both of you. Um, you both have been involved in producing Sonic the Hedgehog games in both Japan and the US, specifically Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Sonic Adventure 2. Um, what were the differences that you found in terms of inspiration for both of you uh, between working in Japan and working in the US? Were there different inspirations that you gathered from the environments around you or the cultures or things like that? So, this is Sonic Adventure 1 is アドベンチャー 1、あの、立ち戻ったので、あの、アドベンチャー 1 think Paul Bobby's okay. trying to keep up. Yeah. So, um Sonic Adventure 1 was developed in Japan. Sonic Adventure 2 was developed in the US. And I think these titles both have elements of Japan and America in them. I think you can see it quite clearly. So like, for example, in Adventure 1, there's lots of elements of exploration. Um, and in Adventure 2, we try to gear it more towards Western players. So it's, it's more about speed and being a lot quicker and action-based gameplay. Let me translate the question to another one. Sure. I think we all enjoyed our uh, favorite US influence in Sonic Adventure 2, right? City Escape? San Francisco, all the hills? That's my favorite level. <laughs> そうですね。あの、僕もちょうど飯塚がソニック 何がって これ出していくかっ
ソニックが伸びていったのもあるかもしれませんね。はい、I think it is hard to translate. <laughs> It's a very detailed answer, to be fair. Okay, I'm going to try. So, when I worked on Sonic, the original Sonic the Hedgehog,、um, obviously that was developed in Japan. And then from then, from the second installment, we, we moved to the, U- the US and we were developing in the US. And I think it's really hard to put a finger specifically on what made the difference for us in terms of our inspiration and stuff. But really, the air that we breathed, I think, just fundamentally changed the way we were. And had an overall effect on the game that we developed. So, when we created, and moving on further down the line, when we created Sonic Adventure 2, we wanted it to be inspired by San Francisco. So, we decided to move and develop in、uh, the US. And, you know, again, so we were living and breathing the American lifestyle. During development, we were doing playtesting with, you know, American、um, audiences. And really trying to get a, a gist of what would be a best fit for a game to be developed to have global and Western appeal.、Um, so I think it's really hard to say specifically what inspired us, but I think just fundamentally the air that we breathed and, and the fact that we were living and breathing you know, in that environment, it really created a difference and allowed us to achieve our objective of creating a game with global appeal. That's deep. That's very deep. I think if that manifests itself as massive egg golems in pyramid caves, I think we're all the wiser for it. So, we've got some questions from some fans now.、Um, first, for Izuka san,、yep. there's a very specific question regarding Sonic Heroes.、Um, when you in- reintroduced the Chaotix yeah, for Chaotic, Sonic yeah. Heroes,、uh, how did you decide which personality each character would have、oh. and how they would work together in a detective agency? How did that come about? Ah.、Uh. It is hard to answer. I know, 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 ソニックヒーローズにもう一度登場させたんですけども、まあ、その時にもうあのまだ当時はあの3人にどういうパーソナリティもついてなかったんですねでなのであのキャラクターを見てもうあのベクターはこう力持ちで音楽が好きででチャーミーはおちゃらけででエスピオに関してこうなんかちょっと個性的な要素をが取り入れたくてちょっと忍者フューチャーを入れてこの3人のバランスですねあのキャラクターのバランスを取ったのがあのソニックヒーローズの新しいカオティックスの3人です。Okay um so the chaotix all the main Characters, the three characters, Vector, Charmy, and Espio,、um, they were already in the original design doc, and we wanted to bring them to life and utilize the three characters that we created. And when we were looking at them, they happened to fall into the power, fly, and speed type, and they just happened to fall, you know, all fall into place already. And with Vector, We made him the power type and we made him like music. With Charmy, it was all about her being a kind of fun character. And with Espio, we wanted to do a little twist, so we made him a ninja ninja type character. And yeah, it just kind of happened to fall into place. Awesome. That's, that's, that's one. So there's a question for Nakasan here.、Um, at which point did you realize that、uh, Sonic the Hedgehog would become? A successful、uh, project within Sega? Like, did you have a feeling during development that it was going to be a successful project, or were you surprised at the popularity of Sonic, like, even to this day? Mm. 
、うんまあ、どちらかというと、まあ、あの思った以上にヒットしたんで、まあ、びっくりはしたのは間違いないと思うんですがもともとやっぱソニックってあの当時やっぱり任天堂対セガっていう構図があってでセガのハードメガドライブ、まあ、ジェネシスがまだ全然売れてなくてですねいかにして、まあ、僕ら日本で。えー、とそのメガドライブの地位を上げるかっていうのを強くあの会社から言われてるわけじゃなくて僕らソニックチームだけで勝手に考えていたんですがその時に「全米大ヒット」っていう言葉があ,のあると日本では映画とかいろんなものが売れるんですよね要するに世界で売れてるものが売れてますよっていうと日本でヒットするという構図があったので任天堂に勝つためにはその言葉がどうしても欲しかったんですね。なのでソニックの一番最初作り始めのところから全米大ヒットというところにもう向かってるんですでそれまでのゲームというのは全部我々の中というかにあの日本だけのことを考えていたりしていたんですがそのオートリーというか羽田の辺境みたいなところで世界に向けて発信ができるのかというのが、まあ、我々では分からなかったんですがすごくそこに向かって強い意志を持って作っていたので。あの最終的には全米大ヒットどころか世界中で大ヒットになってすごく驚きましたしすごく嬉しかったですね。So it really overachieved my expectation.、Um, so I, there was an element of surprise when we did get a hit. At the time, it really was a time of Sega versus Nintendo. And you know, we weren't selling as much as Nintendo in terms of hardware. So, for us, it wasn't a,、um, a sort of objective given down by Sega, the company, but within the team, what we wanted to do was we wanted to create a Western hit, a game that would sell all across the Western world. Because in Japan, there's a tendency that when something sells over in the West, like it's a really big hit in the West, and usually when you sell it within Japan, all the Japanese people love. You know, and they, they buy into it. So that was our objective to have a Western, a game that sells in the West in order to beat Nintendo and sell more, you know, Mega Drives. And in the end, we didn't just make a game that sold in the West, but it was a global success. So I'm really, really happy with the result. Excellent. Well, I don't know about anyone else, but anyone who's a 90s kid probably thought that Sonic was much better than Mario, right? Thank you. Of course he is. Of course he is. <laughs> so,、uh, question for Izuku san now.、Um, after the positive reception to Sonic Mania, as we just saw with the trailer back there,、um, is there a possibility of developing more 2D adventures in the same style as Sonic Mania? Button? Is there, is there a possibility of creating more 2D adventures in the style of Sonic Mania following the positive response of the trailer?、Uh, in the future, right? In the future. あそうですね、あのーまあ、実際、あのー、先月のサンディエゴのパーティーでソニックマニアを初お披露目したんですけども、まあ、その時に本当、私はドキドキしてたのね、実は、あのー、こう今の時代、今更この 2D のレトロな新作ゲームを出すことに対して、あのー、ファンの皆さんは喜ぶんだろうか、がっかりするんだろうかっていうのがすごく不安だったんですけども。あのパーティーの後のすごい皆さんからあの評価をいただきましてでプレイしていただいた皆さんからもすごくあの応援していただいて、まあ、こんなにもあのソニックマニアのコンセプトが受け入れられたんだなっていうのは本当にあの私自身すごくびっくりしてますなのであの、まあ、今後どうするかっていうのは本当にあのマニアがあの実際あのセールス的にも成功するかどうか次第なんですけどもまたあのー、こういう皆さんを驚かすような新しいゲームを作っていきたいなと思ってます。So last month、uh, we showed Sonic Mania for the first time, and that was in、um, the San,、uh, an event in San Diego. And to be honest, I was really nervous before the event. I, I really wasn't sure whether the fans would either like or dislike Sonic Mania as a concept. In a, world, in, a, in a modern world where our sort of expectations from games have changed, where there's a lot of 3D games, to release you know, a game that's essentially a 2D side scroller, I was, wasn't sure how that would go down. 
But after the event and during the event, I got a lot of positive feedback, and and I, it's, I'm really glad that people like this concept. And uh, I'd like to continue to create content to uh, that pleases the fans and also uh, to surprise people in a good way. So is that a maybe? Maybe, yes. <laughs> what did you guys think of Sonic Mania? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You might just convince azuka san to do another one. So, another question for Nakasan. And we've had this question quite a lot through the Summer of Sonic website. Um, so, it has to be asked. Would you like to work on a Sonic game again in the future? So, this is the first time that I have a ソニックが作らないだろうなと、ま、正直ちょっと思っていたんですが、最近ま、こう毎年のようにかな、飯塚と大島と一緒にご飯を食べたりすることがあってですね。その時にこう大島が最近マリオ&ソニックやってんだよ
最後の締め、最後の締めは、もう一回言ってもらっていいですか、最後の締め。<笑>一番,い一番いい思いで今ちょうど話してたんですけど多分僕15年間しかソニック関わってないんですがその間で会社のお金を使ってですねあの南米旅行に行ったのがやっぱり一番僕的には思い出深くてですねソニックアドベンチャーを作るちょうど 2D から 3D に変わるっていった瞬間にですね今までのゲームを作るのにドット絵で作ってるんじゃなくて実際の写真とかをテクスチャーとして貼れるようになっていたっていうのもあってですね南米の遺跡9つぐらいを2週間で回るみたいなのを飯塚と僕とあと4人ですか6人のメンバーで南米旅行を2週間したんですがあのすごくその行ったおかげでですねソニカ・アドベンチャーやられたら分かると思うんですがすごくそのジャングルの雰囲気だったりジャングルの中に遺跡が現れるみたいな雰囲気をすぐ出すことができた。これは本当にあのインディ・ジョーンズとかを作るときにです、ね、スティーブン・スピルバーグとかがあのそういうロケ班に行っているっていうのもあってゲームも 3D になるときにそういうステップアップをするべきなんじゃないかという思いを持って作り始めていた瞬間、まあ、すごくチャレンジをしだした瞬間だったのもあってです,、ねあのー、すごくなんですか印象としては残っています。Final question, so it's probably going to be a really, really good final answer.、Okay. So, I was involved with the creation of Sonic titles for 15 years, and for me, I think my fondest memory was using Sega's money, the company money, to go to a trip in South America. <laughs> When we created Sonic Adventure, you know, we, we went from 2D to 3D. And we were able to literally just、um, almost kind of stick、uh, photographs onto models. So we wanted to go on site and really get a feel for the locations that we wanted to emulate. We went to nine different historical sites over two weeks. And you know, I traveled with key members of the team, obviously, including Izuka san. And,、um, with So, and I think you can really see the results of that, the benefits of that trip that we had in the game. So, when you're playing adventure, you, when you run through and you're traversing through the jungle, you'll come across these、um, historical sites. And, and I think even with films, they, it's kind of like knowing practice to go to location before they actually film you know, the scene that they're trying to create. And I think games were, it was just that kind of hitting that milestone when it became really. 
relevant to go to location and actually you know, really try and emulate an environment within a game. So I think um, that, that was one of my fondest memories. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your answer, Makazan. Thank you. I think that wraps up our Q&A, so please give a warm hand to Mr. Takashi Zuka, Mr. Yuji Naka, and Mr. Bobby Wertheim. Thank you. If you'd like to uh, remain on stage for just...